Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. It's been a busy day so far. If you haven't checked out today's episode of The Teachers, definitely check it out. Uh, don't forget to go to our official website, theteachers.com. That's D A T E A C H A S dot com. Um, we're on Spotify, a bunch of other places, but you're, we're also right here on the Black Voice uh, channel. Look, uh, I'm not going to be long, but I want to talk to you about something that's really on my mind. The question kind of came up twice today in two separate conversations. Uh, what troubled me is that it was both uh, black sisters that brought the conversation up which is challenging to me when it should be a conversation that black men are having. Before I get started, I wanna remind you, if you have not donated recently or you have not donated at all, we need your support. If you're familiar with what I'm doing, if you believe in what I'm doing, uh, don't second guess it, show some love. Um, it's that simple. We are behind in fundraising goals and efforts at a number I'm not even going to talk about. Um, but at the same time, I'm going to continue to challenge you to give. At the same time, I'm going to continue to put in the work one way or the other. Uh, but with that said, I'm moving on. Uh, look, I remember a time growing up and when my sons grew up where our heroes were football players and and doctors and you know, I mean you know you looked at him and you said hey you know here's a man's man and here's what they're doing you know I mean a lot of different things you know astronauts whatever but it was a man's man and you know he looked like a man he walked like a man he spoke like a man he presented like a man you didn't have to question anything about it now it didn't mean he was a perfect man it didn't mean that he had it all together but it meant when you looked at him you saw him trying to carry himself in a way that was respectful in a way that was powerful in a way that spoke of his power and his willingness to love and protect his family and then I look around now and I realize that the boys of today have heroes who wear dresses and skirts and paint their faces and their nails and they wear eyelashes and they color their hair and all of these different things and they present in a neutral at best uh, energy and we're wondering why we are getting the frustrated black male youth that are violent, that are emotionally unstable, that have problems coping in so many different areas of life in which they should be properly socialized. It's because we have failed them. We have failed them. We have failed to challenge them. We have failed to model to them. We have failed to present and be something that they can look up to. We are not engaging them. We are not talking to them. We are not leading them. We are, if we are, a, a good man or what we what we believe are good men we're too busy doing it and trying to be low key I've heard this so many times that real men aren't out blasting what they're doing here's the problem with that all of the crap that's negative all the crap that's wrong it's being blasted so while we're being good up in the cut while we're handling our business at home and just like, hey man, real men, don't. let me tell you something. If we ever wanted to shop from, shout from the rooftop, if we ever wanted to put good manhood on the blast, good black manhood on the blast, this is the time right now to do it. Why? Because it's not being portrayed. It's not presented in images. It's not presented in media. It's not represented in music. It's not out there. Um, I was just reading an article on Michael J, uh, Michael J. White and his wife and how long they've been together and their careers and everything like that. And as crazy as some of the characters he's played for Tyler Perry, the truth of the matter is you, you've never heard him out of, out of boot or out of character with his wife. You've never heard her out of boot or out of character. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But what I'm saying is obviously his marriage hasn't been highlighted because it doesn't reflect what mainstream wants us to see in black love, in, 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 in black marriage, in, in, in the way that black men carry themselves, in the way that black men treat women. And, 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 and the thing is, 
black black moms, black single moms, you need to make it an effort to put the right model, the right image, the right type of guys in front of your kid. If you got friends or you know somebody and that dude holding it down, he needs to be amplified. He needs to be blue. This whole, I'm just chilling, you know, real men don't blow their own horn. Hell, we need to be blowing our horns right now because this is what's happening. While we're sitting around arguing uh, semantics as it uh, pertains to social socialization and racial socialization, they are forced socializing our kids with this bull crap and they are taking it as gospel. They are soaking it up at the most developmental stages. They are bombarded with messages that don't serve them, messages that weaken them, messages that challenge and confuse their identity, messages that 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 manhood is everything except what it really is. And we're over arguing semantics. Too 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 busy wanting to be the one who said it and did it right, and we're failing. And they're force feeding our children death. And they're doing it in a way that I'm just sitting up and I'm marveling. And because we lack identity, because we lack a sense of self, because we lack an understanding of what we are and who we are, we literally fall for the okie doke. We are literally thinking not, there's nothing wrong with it. We are literally sitting up thinking that everything is good. And the truth of the matter is everything is anything but good. And what we are going to have to do is literally sit up and make up in our minds that we are not going to sit around and pretend that everything is okay. We're not going to just sit up and play easy. We're not going to just sit around and say, okay, this is what matters uh, this is how it is and th we're not going to worry about that we're not going to do this we're not going to do that and it's our responsibility to effectively and properly socialize our children it's our responsibility to effectively and properly teach them who they are and give them what they need to be what they want to be like i said when we grew up it wasn't a question about what was respectful and what was a man and what a man did a man did what he had to do to take care of his family and again i'm not talking about being perfection but men did real good men didn't beat on their women real good men didn't mishandle their women real good that was something that my grandfather taught me and another man that I held in high regard taught me at two different points in my life. Same lesson. And it's something that I've really worked hard at doing. And anybody that knows me knows it. My, my, my grandfather told me, you can judge a character of a man. You can judge who a man is by the behavior and the confidence of his wife. You can look at his wife, you can look at how she she responds when you mention his name. You can look at her and see which, which, how she responds when he walks in the room. She'll tell you what kind of man he is because if he can't take care of home, if he can't take care of her, if he can't be right by her, he, his character is trash because it starts with her, it starts in the home. And it doesn't mean he's perfect, it doesn't mean he already gets it right, but he's loving, he's trying to make it happen. Then it starts, then you look at his kids. Then you check how he is on his word. Man, we used to hear it all the time. A man's uh, word is his bond. Used to be a handshake. You better get it in writing now. Why? Because we're lost, we've lost ourselves and we have become okay with being lost. Nobody's checking these cats for sagging. Nobody's checking these cats that's sitting up here saying okay I'm a man because I I, 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 I can uh, I can blast I can blast the gat no can you feed your family can you protect your daughters now if you got a blast blast because somebody is threatening your family blast to, to, to you empty that motherfucker if somebody's if somebody's threatening your family because I damn sure am I'm gonna defend and protect I'm gonna hold Anybody that comes at my family at a standard, they better be ready to deal with because I'm coming. My, my, my hope is I never have to, but my thing is anybody knows me knows. We've got to redefine man. 
we got to redefine manhood where manhood is about being a leader not because we say we're kings not because we say we're the head not because we talk good game but because when we walk in the room the women relax because they know they're safe because when we walk in the room the kids smile because we know they know we have their back because when we walk in everybody understands kings just walked in the room not because we're yelling it but because we walk it because we live it because we're willing to die for it and until we get to that we can talk all the trash we want to about black empowerment we can talk all the trash we want to about building far too many of us have gotten into this individualized mindset anyway we just worried about what we got because if we got it, somebody's convinced us that because we got the bag, we are high value men and that means we can get to do whatever the hell we want to know. Your manhood is gonna be judged by more than the bag. Get the damn bag, we need the bag. We need all the damn bags, but the bag alone don't make you a man. What do you stand for? Uh, you know, my favorite era for Dr. King is the last two years of his life when he realized all that he had been doing was being misled by the leadership uh, class to be a buffer to the black race. And he decided, you know, I've integrated my people into a burning building. And he decided that he was going all out to take everyone that had become followers and supporters of him. And he was going to the nation to demand reparations. He was going to the nation to demand a check and it cost him his life. But one thing he said, when you look at his memoirs, and uh, he, he actually said this out loud, but when you look at his memoirs, he knew his time was short because he knew what he was standing for and what he was up against. But this is what he said. When people would question me, he says, a man that does not have something for which he is willing to die is not fit to live. You want to know what a man is? Ask him what he's willing to die for. We'll live for a bunch of crap. Ain't nothing wrong with living either. I'm not saying go out there and look for something to get killed over. What I'm saying is you got to have something that's so precious to you, you will die for it. And that's going to tell people who you are. What you're willing to die for will tell people what you stand for. And that's where we are failing. We don't, we're not clear and, 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 and intentful in presenting what we stand for. We've got to do better. I'm, 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 I'm at my place, man. I'm finna go in here and smoke me a, a stick or two, talk some noise, and challenge these cats in here with the same thing I'm challenging you with, and have some conversation. The one thing I say about the men in here is that most of them are handling their business. Some of them some hard headed, talking some mad stuff, but I check that shit. You're not gonna be in my presence mishandling women. And they don't like it because that's what guys do. It, it ain't, some of these cats, it ain't nothing for them to call a woman a bitch or a hoe, not in my presence. I don't even know who you're talking about, but not in my presence. It's too easily flowing off your mouth. I don't care what she behaves like. Certain things shouldn't flow off your mouth when you're referring to a sister. Not because she's carrying herself in a certain way, but because you have a certain expectation of how you're going to be. And you don't realize a lot of times the level of a person's uh, growth, the level, level of a person's healing, the level of a person's uh, rise or or a change comes from what you demand of them by how you treat them, what you demand of them by how you carry yourself. Those are the things that you have to sit up and you have to look at and say, I am going to do everything I possibly can to be the best I can in the way I handle women. Not because they are necessarily carrying themselves in the way that I think they should, but because maybe by treating them in a way that they've never been treated before, they start to question what was that about, and they start to search it out, and they say, hey, I like being treated like that. Maybe I'll move in a way where more people will treat me like that, and they start to develop. Sometimes being a leader means you lead. You know, anybody can sit up and point a finger. That ain't leadership. Anybody can place blame. That ain't leadership. Anybody can beat their chest about who they are and how they act. That ain't leadership. Leadership is getting results out of people. Come on. You want to talk? Let's talk. Let's talk about what's real. We are failing. It, the proof is in the pudding. We're worse now than 50 years ago in every socioeconomic category. If we're the leaders, who does it fall on? Ask any damn body in, the, in a role of leadership. Ask any coach. 
how many losses their team is going to have before they lose their job. It doesn't matter how crappy the damn team is. You just seen coaches get fired. You go like, you fired him. He ain't got nothing. To, he ain't got nothing to play with. It doesn't matter. It starts at the top. So, again, we got to get our shit together. Now, I know this isn't the scholarly thing to talk. This is man to man, and this is me challenging the women who are going to watch this. Find men that you can put your kids around, both girls and boys. So they know what men look like. So they know what men sound like. So they know how men behave. Stop teaching your daughters that the little boy that hit them on, hit, hit them, hit, uh, hitting on them and thumping their ear and all that shit in third grade likes them. Stop telling them it's okay for to be aggressive, uh, for for a male to be aggressive towards them because it's no. He better keep his damn hands to himself. I'm gonna be talking to his dad and his mom. We need to really, really stop cuterizing. Cuter Word I'll just make up. We got to stop cuterizing shit. It's a bunch of shit we done made cute that's destroying us. We need to start holding people accountable to being who they are supposed to be. And checking it when they're not. Period. Now, I know a bunch of people ain't going to like this. And I really don't care because this ain't I ain't here to be liked. I'm here to speak real. And it's time to speak real. We are really, really fading fast. And we don't even give a shit. It don't seem like it. But okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak truth to power no matter what. I'm going to call a spade a spade. You know. Uh, and, not, and again, this isn't about perfection. I've never claimed to be perfect. But I love hard. And I respect women. Uh, I love children and I protect children. And you're going to see me doing that, not because of somebody else, but because of who I am. And nobody will ever be able to challenge that, no matter what they can say. Because when you look around and you check, I handle people the way I say I do. Now, the question is, what are we going to do about it? Look, on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, I, need, I, I need to go and get in. And, and, Mind. It's Saturday. I'm up here getting hot. Uh, but the conversation, I mean, why is it that two women are bringing this to me? Uh, and the question was specifically two different women, two different conversations. I didn't bring it up. They are really bothered with the fact that so many kids that our kids look up to walk males that our kids look up to walk around in dresses and skirts. And real men aren't addressing the shit. This is coming from women. We want women to respect us. We want them to talk to us in a certain kind of way. They're looking at us and they're waiting on us to move. And these are women that are in the in the trenches. So these ain't the chicks you can talk to and think anything. They in the trenches. They done proved their stuff already. So now, I'm calling everybody to the mat. Time to put in work. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. For those who love the work I do, who believe in the work I do, who want to see my philosophy, my teaching, my, my designs, my programs reach a higher level. Because I always hear people saying, why doesn't he have a larger subscribership? You know, why isn't his channel more known? Because I don't bullshit. I don't tap and dance. I'm not out here picking fights just for the sake of uh, building my popularity. I move a certain way. I handle myself a certain way. What I bring, I bring. I'm not going to be something I'm not. I'm not going to pretend. I'm not going to throw shit out there for shock value. I'm not going to sensationalize shit. I'm going to talk and I'm going to teach you real. The problem is, if, we, if, if we're not being entertained, we don't want to hear it. I'm not going to entertain your ass. You want to live. You want to grow. You want to become something. I, I, I've, I've got the blueprint. I've had the blueprint. I've been sharing it. I've been helping people win. You know who will come and pay me? For what I do without question Them Because they know I got that I got it, I got that fire I'm doing some shit that a lot of these big time cats That done got platforms have it And I got plans for all of that That I'm, I'm going to take care of I'm going to be okay, me and my family going to be okay But I'm telling you This community needs 
consistency. This com community needs people who aren't going to exploit it. This community needs people willing to die in it. This community needs a bunch of men who are willing to plant seeds that may not even live long enough to see come to fruition. Everybody wants the quick win because everybody wants the credit. I don't give a damn about the credit. My legacy is speaking for me already. By the time I leave this place, my, my legacy will be locked and loaded and I won't have to worry. My family won't have to worry. My legacy is true. But what I'm telling you is too many cats out there, they just want the quick win. Why? Because they need their name and lights. They want, they want somebody to recognize what they did. You can't get a quick fix on 400 years of fuck ups. 400 years of trauma. You ain't gonna quick fix that. You're gonna have to create a couple of generations that's untouched by it. Been trying to tell y'all that for years. This is the area, this is the area of expertise I operate in. I'm telling you, you can't keep sending broken people out, expecting them to outperform the people who broke them. You're gonna have to create a generation, isolate it, protect it, ensure of themselves with a protocol plan of how they're gonna move and claim power as they move. But I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, again, if you believe in what I'm doing, show some love. Other than that, I'm about to get ready to get out of here uh, and go get a seat. Because people keep walking in, I'm going to get in, I'm going to have to fight over a seat. All right, look, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day.